Good evening, folks, and a very warm welcome to our service of Christmas lights this evening. You're most, most welcome here in Ellen Parish Church. My name is Alistair Bruce, and I'm a minister here in Ellen Parish Church. Um, this evening's service is going to be led by myself and uh, Pam, one of our parish workers, and Rachel, uh, who is our director of music. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Today is the 21st of December, and it is the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. Along with the longest night comes the shortest day. In fact, if you went outside at noon today to see your own shadow, your shadow would be stretched and elongated, far greater than any other day. Even though Christmas time is a season of great joy and light. For many of us, it can feel heavy, almost like a season of darkness and shadows. The joy around us can accentuate the pain and loss we have carried. Sorrow and grief and longing sometimes jolt us unexpectedly like crashing waves. Other times they feel more like a churning that persists even when celebration surrounds us. The purpose of this service is not to take away or to minimize any pain, but to help reveal God's presence in the midst of it. This time set apart is a reminder that we do not journey alone. Tonight, our tears and our heaviness are not just accepted, they are welcomed. After tonight, the winter solstice will end, and each day will reveal more sunlight. Although nearly imperceptible, every single day gets a little longer, and each night a little shorter. We pray God works in our hearts in the same way, revealing his light a little more each day, lessening the darkness and the shadows. Today we come together to acknowledge the tension of both and, the fact that joy and sadness exist together, birth and death exist in this life. Maybe you've come with family tonight. Maybe you've come alone. Maybe you're familiar with this place. Or maybe you come as a stranger. However you find yourself this evening, we are one community tonight with brokenness in common. Maybe you're wondering if Jesus is real if God is love, if there is healing for your pain. Maybe you've come confidently expecting God to meet you in your deepest heartache. We welcome whatever you bring, however you feel, and that the you that you are this evening. We invite you to not be strong tonight, to not be what you think everyone else expects you to be. We invite you to be honest, to be vulnerable, to be open to all feelings. God promises to meet us right where we are and just as we are and we welcome you here. There are no have-tos in this service just invitations. You may sit, you may cry, you may speak, you may be silent. Our prayer is simply that God meets you and me 
and all of us in the depths of our hearts this evening. This world is full of happy and sad, joy and sorrow, healing and pain. The stories of the Bible show a range of emotions, sometimes surprisingly, like when God's people complain and even yell out against their creator. When they cry and wail, we may even think, what's wrong with them? But God's people were not shielded from loss or pain or sorrow or death. They were not too holy to hurt, to feel anger, to grieve. The book of Psalms shouts and shudders with tears, bitterness and pain and turns around to explode with laughter, celebration and joy. God did not create us metal and soldered like robots. He created us soft, vulnerable, and feeling. God breathed in us innumerable emotions, not for us to shut them down, push them through, or hide them, but to experience them. In Jesus' time, people visibly displayed, displayed their sorrow by putting ashes on their heads, tearing their clothes, and wearing uncomfortable sackcloth. Can you imagine walking around with that today as a sign saying, I'm broken and I'm grieving today? Or one that says, I feel like my world fell apart. Our value of independence, determination and pride has come at a cost. Many of us never find that safe place to acknowledge our grief. And we strive instead to just keep it under wraps. The problem is, putting our best face on doesn't make that pain go away. And it keeps us small. It limits our capacity. And it keeps us from being the amazing creations we were created to be. It keeps us from community, from knowing and being known.
Tonight is an opportunity just to be real before God, to bring your emotions before him, to acknowledge grief or sadness. It is an invitation to let the disappointments you carry lead you to a deeper experience with God. Although many pray for miracles in hope of finding God, most people have their greatest encounters with God in their darkness. Many people know the declaration from Genesis 1, verse 3, when God says, let there be light. But we can't forget the context. There was darkness before there was light. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So if you feel darkness tonight, the Spirit of God is still here, hovering over the waters, over the waves, over the churning ache you may feel. Psalm 139 verses 7 to 12 says, Where can I go from your Spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Take a slow, very deep breath. Hold your breath for a moment and then let it out slowly. As you take another deep breath, Think about any times you have sensed God's presence with you, even in the darkness. An unexpected butterfly, a timely song on the radio, a text, a word spoken at the right moment. Ask God to meet you here. He is near. this pain broke in and took it all took the song from the springtime and the dance from the flame took the noonday warmth and the morning hush now the ground's spilling beneath me the ropes are uncoiling the trees are leafless the sky is torn My breath's a broken feather. There's no beauty left. There's nothing here for me. I'm paper thin. I'm in a room of shadows and it's caving in. I'm turning in circles, I'm giving up. The world is giddy, the sense is gone. The floor is an ocean, I'm sinking in. Where are you now? Where is your touch? Where is the reason, the answer, the end? Now I'm chasing your shadow and I'm grasping for questions. I'm calling out, I'm asking why. Yet when I turn, you turn. When I reach, you reach. And in the searing burn, you wait for me. Dress my tears in kisses, cradle my grief, touch me in the silence, hold me in the heat. And when the ragings rush, drown me in defeat, I make my bed of dust, and you lie with me.
The season before Christmas is called Advent. It's the time when we remember the coming of Jesus on a dark night long ago. Today we've added gifts, trees, decorations, cakes to the celebration. But generations ago, those who were waiting, hoping for a Messiah to appear, were living in a very dark time. The history of God's people is, was filled with fighting, exile, disappointment, slavery, and longing for a God who seemed to go silent. Isaiah chapter 9 describes them as people walking in darkness. Listen to the rest of the passage through. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Later in this same chapter, we hear the promise of what that light will be like. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. If you are walking in darkness tonight, this story is your story. There is hope. The great light that came into their world is still here in our world, and his name is Jesus. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is at your shade, at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. As we light the first candle, we remember the family and friends we have loved and lost, whether recently or long ago. Who is it you are missing tonight? Some we have loved no longer walk this planet because of sickness and death. Others are no longer present in our lives because of life changes, transitions and broken relationships. We remember those we loved, their faces, their voices, their dreams, what they gifted us by knowing them. We 
Lord, we thank you for the gift of memories and for life itself. We are grateful that even in darkness, the light still shines and the darkness has not overcome it. Help us in times of unbelief and restore our hope. As we light the second candle, we think of the stuff of life we have lost, whether tangible or intangible. We counted on these things, our jobs, finances, homes and health, loss of trust, hope, joy or even our faith. As we remember these things, Help us open our hands to release the grip on what we once had. God, we ask for peace and comfort in its place. Lord, we thank you for the gift of memories and for life itself. We are grateful that even in darkness, the light still shines and the darkness has not overcome it. Help us in times of unbelief and restore our hope. As we light the third candle, we remember ourselves. We remember the person we used to be, the person we became, and the person we are now. The memories bring a mix of emotions. Windows of joy and gratefulness are joined by sadness, hurt, pain, anger, and fear. 
Lord, give us your compassion as we see our own failures and shortcomings. We accept that we are a work in progress and we long for healing. Help us be gentle with ourselves as we remember the past, acknowledge the present and look to the future. Lord, we thank you for the gift of memories and for life itself. We are grateful that even in darkness, the light still shines and the darkness has not overcome it. Help us in times of unbelief and restore our hope. Oh, come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thy advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. community, as well as those around the globe. We feel the heaviness for those who suffer tragedy, faced unimaginable injustices, or continue to live in war. We think of humanity and your very breath being in us all, in our broken world, filled with pride, hatred and self-preservation. We acknowledge that your light shines. Lord, we thank you for the gift of memories and for life itself. We are grateful that even in darkness, the light still shines and the darkness has not overcome it. Help us in times of unbelief and restore our hope. Oh, come desire of nations, bind in warn the hearts of all. sad division cease and be thyself a king of peace rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel As we light our fifth candle, 
We remember the gift God has given us surrounding this very season at Christmas time. Hope. You see, out of darkness light came in the most unlikely of places in an unexpected time. Jesus came. He didn't come to eliminate the darkness, but to shine in the middle of it. In the darkest of places, we remember that God carries us, walks with us when necessary, never leaves us on our own. Lord, we thank you for the gift of memories and for life itself. We are grateful that even in darkness, the light still shines and the darkness has not overcome it. Help us in times of unbelief and restore our hope. Oh, come, oh, bright and moon. shadows of the night and turn our darkness into light rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel As we continue, we invite you to sit for a time in the peace and the music. It may feel uncomfortable since we are so used to filling our time and our minds with so much noise and busyness. We invite you to acknowledge your loss, your doubt, your confusion. Whatever emotions surface, our prayer is that in the midst of any darkness around us, we feel the embrace of God, a God whose spirit is hovering ever near to us, a God who is present, maybe even more powerfully in our pain than in our joy. God's promise is that the darkness will not last forever. Tomorrow the days will begin to get longer. It's hardly noticeable at first. But as the days move by, winter turns to spring, then summer. And so we pray you experience the hope of God and the God who is light in the darkness. During this time, Rachel and I will play the song Where Grace Grows. The words will appear on the screen for you to use as a meditation and reflection. The song was written to speak into a deep sense of grief and to help articulate and unfold some of the competing feelings of grief we experience and to ultimately put all of those feelings into the embrace of a God who is love and grace and with the help of the Holy Spirit, peace and grace will grow in us. After we've played the song, you'll be invited when you're ready to come forward and light your own candle. You may want to name your sadness out loud to God. You may wish to do that silently. As you're lighting a candle, feel free to name a person, an event, an emotion, or say a word of prayer, either out loud or in your head. There is no rush this evening. This space is here for you and for your feelings. If you have multiple remembrances you wish to acknowledge, feel free to light a candle for each. And after you light your candles, return to your seats and we'll continue.
fragile sustain Wounded but walking the rhythm of routine Aching and blessing and echoes between The color fades, and I'm afraid. Hear the words are sounds that fall around. Here we search for shreds of what we used to know. Strength and the sink Falling and faking We cling to the brink Heartache and reverie The stories we evoke Time waits for mercy A refuge of hope In broken place Leave us hints of grace Hear the color fades and I'm afraid Hear the words are sounds that fall Search for shreds of what we used to know to find where grace grows. We are held where grace grows. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. 
for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Our current world is not God's perfect plan. But Revelation 21 gives us a beautiful picture of what God has in mind for us. A new heaven and a new earth. There will be no more need for tears. There will be no formal ending to the service this evening. You can sit here for a while if you like. After a while we'll bring the lights up at the back of the church. But don't feel like this is a sign that you have to move. It's merely a sign that the light is coming. Take the time you need and move when you're ready. We invite you to visit the display at the back with candles and remembrance books. Please take a candle away with you to light for your remembrances. The pastoral care team, Pam, Rachel and I will be here if you'd like personal prayer or to talk but we won't disturb your remembrances. And if you'd like to talk about anything, then please feel free to speak to any one of us. Please take the candles with you. God invites us to keep his light close to us. We have refreshments prepared for those who would like to stay. Just join us when you're ready at the back of the church. Take your time. Sit for a while if you wish. There is... No rush. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God nothing came to be. What came to be through God was life, and this life was the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen.